Hello and welcome to our travel vlog from the Scottish Highlands. A little heads up, I am Swedish, so there will be some name butchering in this video. We woke up in our beautiful rental apartment in the small town of Komri and walked down to the local sourdough bakery and bought some bread and made breakfast in the kitchen. The house is designed by Charles René Macintosh in 1903 and a lot of the original details are still there. It's a two bedroom apartment with a beautiful kitchen and when we arrived we got greeted with this beautiful tea display and welcome card. If you saw the vlog from our stay in Edinburgh and Glasgow, you already know that we also visited the Macintosh house in preparation before arriving here. If you haven't, there's a link to that video down below. After breakfast, we packed tea and biscuits and walked up to Devil's Cauldron, or Dale's Cauldron, every other sign said something different. But it was a beautiful walk along the river, you see a couple of small waterfalls along the way. We also came upon this log filled with coins. Our first thought was that it was some kind of offering to the forest spirits, similar to the offering throws we have in Sweden. We looked it up and we were right, but this is something you shouldn't do since it has become too popular in recent years, to the point that it is harmful for the forest. The cauldron itself was beautiful, but quite loud, so we walked back a bit and had our tea break by the river. Afterwards, we took the car out on a road trip. We had mapped out a circular route and looked at Google Maps for sites. We drove alongside Loch Erne and just enjoyed the scenery. Scotland is so beautiful that just driving around is lovely. We stopped at a cafe by the road for coffee and cake. Then we ended up by the grave of Rob Roy. Little known to us, except we knew Sir Walter Scott wrote a novel about him, which we haven't read, and Liam Neeson plays him in a movie we haven't seen. So we only knew the story vaguely. The location was beautiful in itself, with a kirk ruin next to the new church. And behind the church you could follow a path down to a couple of minor waterfalls. We continued north and our jaws dropped when we stopped at the Glen Ogle Viaduct and looked back at the view. We continued along Loch Tay on the south side because we had found something on Google Maps that we were not prepared for. The Cave of Cannabanog, or Tonedachtan Mine as it is called for non Mont Python fans. We had to park on the side of the road and make our way up a hill before we reached it. And it was so fun to see how people had left killer rabbits, holy hand grenades and coconuts on a makeshift altar in the mine. We borrowed a bunny for some pictures and then put it back with its friends. Niels had a little sound of music moment before we headed to Hermit's Cave and the Falls of Archen. This was a very nice walk even though it was quite steep, where you park and walk up a hill to a man-made cave that you walk through to get to the plateau overlooking the waterfall. 
A thing that we noticed about Scotland is sometimes it's hard to tell what is really old and what is Victorian building things to look old, which are still old to us, but not as old as they are supposed to look like, if that makes sense. Then if you walk further up, you can cross the river and come down the other side. When we drove back to Comedy, we stopped at a grocery store and got a frozen pizza to heat up for dinner. The first thing we did was to drive to Luss, a beautiful village at Lake Lochman, and rented a canoe and went out on a calm Loch Lomond. This was such a peaceful experience and we managed to get back right before the rain came. We had thought about doing a longer hike, but the weather app said heavy rain was on way, so we went to the Drover's Inn for lunch. One of the oldest still running inns in Scotland, opening in 1705, and supposedly one of the most haunted hotels in Britain. And it really has the feeling of that to be true. Everywhere you look, you are met with old eccentric interior and a lot of old taxidermy that made it wonderfully dark and weird. The food was also delicious. We stopped by some viewpoints and instead of a hike we went to the Devil's Pulpit. This is a popular site but getting down is steep in the beginning. And such a fun thing happened because the couple of getting down before us were also Swedish but didn't know we could understand them. So they had the funniest fight about her not being willing to put away her phone so she could go down safely. It is very beautiful down there, but not something to attempt if you have sore knees or bad balance. On our way back we stopped at Buchanan Castle Ruin. It had been completely taken over by vegetation so you couldn't see much of it. Then we went back, made tea and treats, and spent the evening playing cards. The next morning I woke up earlier than Nils, so I made tea and sat down to read about the history of the house. Every house that you rent from the Landmark Trust have a book about the property with a lot of pictures and information and stories of the restoration process. And in this case it also contained pictures of the original drawings by Charles René Mackintosh. After breakfast, we drove to the beautiful Drummond Castle Gardens.
Drummond has all of the characteristics of a courtly 17th century Scottish garden. You may also recognize this place from countless movies and TV series. Next to the neatly laid out garden, you can walk into the forest part of the garden with a lot of wooden sculptures to find. Afterwards, we went back to Comrie to eat a lunch of soup and toasties at the local cafe before heading out for a walk around the town. So I wrote a postcard to my grandmother. In the evening we went out on a short hike up to a lookout point. And here we learned that you can't trust the weather apps even two hours ahead. Because on our way up the rain came. But as soon as we got to the last bit, it stopped and the clouds parted to reveal a beautiful sunset. Niels had on his rain gear, I didn't. But the weather was warm so I wasn't cold, just wet. We ended the day with some more tea and reading in front of the fire. We were a little bit sad to leave our wonderful apartment, but we left Cymru to travel north beginning with a detour to Dune Castle, which turned out to be a real highlight of the trip. We found out about this because we passed a sign on our way home from Devil's Pulpit, and after googling it, it felt like a must after we found the cave of Karabanog. Because here, the rest of the film was set, as well as many other films and series, like Outlander and Game of Thrones. They also have the best audio guide where you got to hear Terry Jones talk about both the castle's history and trivia from filming the Holy Grail, as well as listening to Sam Hewen talk about when the castle was used as Castle Leoch in Outlander. When you know that these two are set in the same castle, you can't unsee it. For example, the scene where Galahad is trapped by the, let's say, friendly nuns, and the kitchen in Outlander is shot in the same room. Then we headed north towards Inverness. Our 
our next stop was the Highland Folk Museum. And I will have this as a must if you visit the Scottish Highlands. It gave so much life to all of the small house ruins that is scattered all over the Highlands. This style of building came with the Vikings and were used up until the early 1800s. And as a Swede this was fascinating, because our housing progressed away from this much much earlier. This was also the first time we got to hear the term the clearances, but more on that in the next video where we go even further north. We got talking to a lovely lady who worked there, and she informed us that there had been an episode of Outlander shot there. Learning that I worked in props, she started telling us all the things that they had done wrong, and how this museum staff had been told off, not to point it out to recruit. The museum is divided in two parts. The other half is late 1800s to 1960s, with wonderfully kept workshops, stores and farms. Museum, we arrived in Inverness at the Cragmire Hotel. We packed in our suitcases and went for a walk around Inverness in the lovely weather, stopping for pizza and local beer at the Black Isle Bar. After getting a bit tipsy, we went shopping for treats, and of course we watched the Holy Grail when we walked back. After breakfast, we went on a road trip around Loch Ness, starting at the Loch Ness Centre and Museum. This was such a nice museum, more an interactive tour with focus on the history of the myth of the Loch Ness Monster presenting all sides, and in the end you get to pick whether you believe or not. All narrated by none other than David Tennant. They also had one of the best gift shops of the trip, and we got some souvenirs. There were also a market with local crafts in town, and we had our third fish and chips of the trip. Then we went on a small excursion up the hill to walk to our first waterfall of the day. We walked to see Urquhart Castle from above, but didn't go down since they were sold out for the day and we hadn't planned to stay in advance, just went with the nice weather. We stopped at the bottom of the lake, just outside Fort Augustus, to dip our feet in the water. Then we drove along the eastern side of Loch Ness, back towards Inverness and came up on amazing views. We stopped at a parking lot and walked up the mountain. This is a tip if you want stunning views but can't or don't want to walk for hour long hikes. This was just a 10 minute walk on an even trail to get to the mountain top. Then we stopped at our second waterfall of the day, the Falls of Foyers. 
This was a bit of a disappointment, even though the waterfall was nice and the nature surrounding it was beautiful. Apparently a lot of the water had been led away to the closed power station. Before we went back to the hotel, we went by the famous Clava Cadence. We were there at dusk, so there were nearly any people there, except two American couples, both trying to film content to the soundtrack from Outlander. They were living their best lives, so I tried my hardest not to get them on film. So you just have to imagine that just outside of frame there are people running towards standing stones and pretending to be traveling back in time. I loved walking around here at dusk. The light and the lack of people made everything magical. We went back to the hotel to prepare and get a good night's sleep before we headed out on our Road 500 road trip. But more on that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!